Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the big question. We're asking, do Muslim communities discriminate against women? I'm delighted to be joined by the postgraduate researcher and blogger for the Huffington Post, uh, Afroz Zaidi Javrad. Afroz, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, Muslim communities discriminating <coughs> against women, we tend to talk about it a lot. I mean, do you think there's a lot of whining over, over nothing? Um, Muslim community does not discriminate against women. And, and it's simply pampering to, 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 to Western media um, to, to, that, that sort of um, wants to sort of create this nonsensical and ridiculous um, supposition. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that um, Western kind of uh, discourse and Western media does tend to demonize uh, the treatment of women in Muslim communities. Um, however, we respond to that by talking a lot about the status of women in Islam. And we talk a lot in theory about men and women being equals. But the problem really is that when it comes down to the day-to-day, -day, the grassroots, um, in operation um, in Muslim communities, women are discriminated against on various levels. And so the answer is not just to um, respond to people who criticize by saying, look, this is what Islam says about women in theory, but also to implement it in practice, which I think is, is the issue, is that it's All not being implemented. All discriminated against on many levels. I mean, don't think discrimination is a bit of a harsh way to put it? Um, is it discrimination? I think, I think it is discrimination, term, although it may not always be conscious. I think that people aren't always conscious of the fact that they are doing it. I think for a lot of uh, situations it's just been kind of accepted as the natural order of things. Is it, is it discrimination or do you think your interpretation is sort of uh, reminiscent of a touch of paranoia, if you like? Uh, I don't think it is paranoia when you actually look at the way the situation example, is. Give us an example where, where you think that women are being discriminated against. Um, for instance, uh, when it comes to mosque leadership, um, Shia communities are slightly better in the sense that we, we have pretty much in all Shia centers a space for female worship, uh, whereas that's not the case for all or for certain other kind of um, non-Shia Sunni and, and, and other um, mosques. Um, so women are discriminated in that sense is that they're not either, they're not allowed to enter or they're not, they don't have their own space um, at the mosque. Yeah, okay, so just picking um, up but on also, that point, just picking up on that particular point, um, again, the, the, the argument would be, yes, you raise a valid point, but, but, but it's not the entire Muslim community. It's a very small part of the community that engages in that practice. And therefore, yes, it's something we ought to look into and we ought to um, you know, uh, remedy. But yeah. it's, not, it's not really, it doesn't really uh, prove the point that Muslim I, community discriminate against women in any way or form, does it? I it don't shows a couple of mosques up north or wherever they may be. No, don't I, don't, a, I don't think it is a couple of mosques up what north. Percentage I would of really, don't have a place I mean, I've not, you know, I've not researched this extensively, but in my experience and in my observation. How many mosques have you been to? As a, well, I know of, I don't actually know of, I know of. Um, the Shia community in the UK overall because of links with, with other mosques and links with sort of organizations like Shia organizations and so on. And I actually don't know of any Shia mosque where a woman might have been, for instance, president. I don't know of Shia mosques where women are involved in decision-making processes. So, for instance, the voting in of a president, um, oh, no, 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 generally, no, no. like, executive committee, <laughs> yes, you right, know, well, decisions and so on. I know of, I know of mosques where, hold on, I, I, I know of mosques where, I mean, World Federation is a good example, right? Sure. Where, where women have voting rights. I, mean, I, I interviewed the president of World Federation myself where we, where we spoke about the fact that women were, were able to to vote and such like. Yeah, but World Federation is, it's an umbrella organization. It's not really, I mean, when you look at the operation, when you look at the position of women at the grassroots, it's the mosques that you need to see. All right, so let, let's and talk about the mosques. I've, I've seen mosques where there are, uh, uh, w women have, have committees and chair ladies and, and, yeah. and, and all the rest of it. Yeah, so but I, I, the, I difficulty, the, the difficulty is that the women kind of get assigned to everything that the women do and the men take charge of everything else, the overall running of the mosque. What's wrong with that? Uh, well, the fact that women then don't get representation, their views don't get represented in the overall running of the mosque. But, but I suppose they do. I mean, EC members 
for example, um, when it comes to Shia mosques, I mean, let, let me cite an example of the Khoja community, for example, which, which is arguably you know, very organized and democratic and, and all the rest of it. So in Stanmore, for example, um, I, I've been to EC meetings myself, not, 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 not in a formal, I'm mean, not a member of EC or anything, but, but um, on behalf of this channel, where, where I've seen women participating, on sure. the EC. So, sure. I mean, I'm sure there are many other examples. So don't think you're running the risk of just stereotyping communities. Well, sort of no, see, that's why we always need to, rather than making blanket statements, we need to look but, but at the point, way... That's you're the one making blanket no, statements no, by I'm saying not. that... That's, that's the, the way Shia the question's the, the being raised. The Shia community, um, in your view, you haven't come across a single mosque where women get adequate representation surely that's a blanket well, statement yeah because if you think about even when you look at executive the executive committee proceedings that you noticed at Stanmore how many women were on there well the, 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 the women were on there I how many how many out of I mean, I saw like percentage two, two, two out three. of how many men so what so you want there to be equal well representation because of that's women. what that's what representation it should be proportionate really that's what representation is all about it should be but do you think there are enough it's got to be practical as well because no no they, well, one does have to be practical because at the end of the day you know you might have a center where there are more men than women who really? want to be part of the ec and therefore you may get a disproportionate representation look at the british parliament well, therefore that's... the british for parliament must discriminate against women how many women are there in the british no, no. parliament no no i think that is an issue of a vicious cycle it's the fact that women have been excluded from participation, and so women sort of get disenfranchised, and then women don't want to participate. Have they been so the, um, from, for instance, things like um, the recognition of members, quite often, even if it's family membership, uh, the paying member is the male spouse. So women kind of naturally get excluded. Women don't get heard because they don't recognize as being uh, as having a valid vote. Do you see what I mean? So that's but, one example. But otherwise as well, like they're, they're different. These things are structured very differently in different mosques. Um, the issue is that if women are not coming forward, it's not because they don't want to, but it's probably more so because they have been marginalized all this time. Let's encourage our callers to call in 0234 That's the number to call and share your views, particularly if you're part of a, a, a mosque or Islamic centre. By the way, I, I only chose um, Stanmore because it's, it's, it's a large, a fairly large uh, Khoja Jamaat, and of course the Khoja community is, is, is certainly seen to be the most organised in the d through democracy and transparency and such like, so no discrimination there in case anyone's getting sort of emotional. Um, but but sh sh give us another example. I mean, you, 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 that, you used that example, we leave it to the viewers to judge whether or not you know, um, yeah. the, the point is a valid one. But where else in, in society um, do you feel that women are being uh, subconsciously or consciously uh, discriminated against? Um, I think it's, I mean, you know, maybe discrimination is a, a strong word. And I think that um, it's, it may, you know, may not always be conscious, like I said. But it's just women are acutely underrepresented. Um, they're underrepresented when it comes to things like mosque leadership. And they're also underrepresented, for instance, when it comes to um, speakers that address gatherings, that address Muslim gatherings. Um, every, pretty much every Muslim channel will have female presenters and it's okay for women, you know, for, for, for women to address audiences over satellite television, but it's not okay somehow for women to address audiences at a mosque. But I think, so I it's think, a bit, there's a bit of a discrepancy there and the fact that, um, uh, you know, obviously women speakers don't get um, kind of any voice at uh, mosque events generally. Um, and also uh, in uh, Islamic societies, there was a, a, a controversy recently with the Birmingham University Islamic Society not um, allowing a female speaker to come, and it was all that was all a bit blown out of proportion. But at the same time, in the four years that I've been at the University of Birmingham, I've never seen a female speaker at an Islamic society event. So, and this is, I'm sure that the Birmingham University ISOC is not unique in that sense. And, it's, and ISOCs are not unique in that sense, communities, Muslim communities in general, there's a real underrepresentation of female speakers. So, 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 so again, I mean, th th there is an underrepresentation of female speakers, but are there actually that many female speakers to go round? Yeah. I mean, if I were yeah, to. Can you, can you name five? Um, name five well, ten? the reason that you don't know them is because they don't address men and women, they address only women. So they've kind of been marginalized to only addressing women. 
chosen to only address women because there's a very fine line between sure. the two, isn't there? We sure. talked about blanket statements, as you said. Yeah. Um, many would argue that 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 that, that they may not want to um, address a mixed congregation. Yeah, sure. But I mean, for instance, um, I mean, in terms of what what examples are you seeking exactly of women who would be willing to? To speak? Well, I, I just don't necessarily buy the argument that, that women, we don't see many female speakers because they're somehow being hindered in some way. My argument is that there's just not enough to go around. No, and, and, and I've been to conferences, case. I've been to conferences in the Islamic community, um, both Sunni and Shi'i, where, 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 where um, males and females have sure. participated. Sure, so I, yeah. I, I don't you, think there's much I understand, of a and I think, but the there. thing is that I think that there will be a lack of perspective because I see this from my position as a woman. And what I see, whereas you might think that one female speaker out of seven male speakers is adequate, I would not call yeah, that adequate. Fine, fine. Um, yeah. When, okay. you know, I've been yes. to events where I've seen a lineup of, you know, speakers and poetry reciters and nasheed reciters. Um, and nasheed's fair enough. There's some kind of this gray area in terms of whether or not you can hear a woman recite in tone. But in terms of speaking, in terms of poetry, I've seen one female reciter out of seven or eight males. Do you see I what think, I mean? Do you, well, so do you see I, what I, I mean in terms I, of lack I, of representation? I, 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 and I, it's not that there aren't female speakers yes. or female reciters. Right. It's just that it's not considered equal mm. representation or more proportionate representation is just not considered. Maybe and it's not it, thought you, to be a problem. You, you made reference to um, equality and proportion and reputation, um, representation and all the rest of it. I mean, so do, does the British Parliament, in your view, discriminate against women? Um, I don't think it's about the British Parliament. But does it? At does it discriminate all? against women? Do you think? I don't know how the British well, Parliament well, 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 works. Well, I mean, the women are in the minority. To... My point is, I don't think we can really use that. The fact that there's one in seven, you know, there's seven speakers. One of them is a woman. Then we should say, oh well, that that, that therefore signifies some sort of um, discrimination. No, but this is not just about one event. This is about all events. There's you know, just not so enough to go around. And no, that's that's really not the case. Right, well, we need to go to a break, <laughs> but uh, we shall we shall agree to disagree agreeably for now. You're watching the big question live on Athlete Bay TV. We're discussing do Muslim communities discriminate against women? Zero two zero three four double one seven eight four two. If you're uh, a sister, a woman who feels discriminated against, please do call in and share your views. If you're indeed a male who thinks that this is all a little hot air, call in. See you soon. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Assalamualaikum and welcome back to The Big Question. We're discussing do Muslim community discriminate against women. I'm delighted to be joined by Afro Zayda Jivraj, the postgraduate uh, researcher and blogger for the Huffington Post. Afro, thank you very much indeed for joining us. So mm -hmm. prior to break, we were talking about discrimination. Let, let's talk a little bit about um, gender segregation. Now, this certainly caused a lot of controversy recently. Yeah. And I, Soku, wanted to have, you know, uh, men and women separated, yeah. and, and this seems to have caused um, a bit of, you know, David Cameron, sort of David Cameron, the Prime Minister, yeah. waded into the discussion there. Um, well, we've got a caller as well, so before we talk about segregation, let, let's take that call and then we'll continue. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you for calling uh, in. Alaikum salam. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, do Muslim community discriminate against women? Yeah. I actually uh, totally agree with sister. Right. Uh, I think Muslim communities discriminate against women. Uh, um, I have uh, a question before I continue. Um, uh, is, it, is the discussion about um, Muslim communities uh, in the West only or in, in East and West in general? Oh, yeah, I think in the West we're sort of tailored a discussion oh, because they're very okay. different and I mean, diverse areas. Um, I mean. yeah. Yeah, I, I see, um, I mean, in general, Muslim communities discrimi discriminate uh, against women. Uh, and if I see the, in the West as well, uh, I feel that many times. Um, as Sister mentioned, in mosques, uh, actually, I, I see this happening in many mosques here um, in Canada. Um, example? Like, example? Can you example of what, what you term as discrimination? Uh, like women are uh, not having the opportunities to voice... Uh, or even have, have leaders, uh, leadership in, in the community to decide on what things happen in the mosque. Uh, even though they have their own section, still they are, they are actually trying hard, as I see, to voice, to have their voice uh, heard. And uh, 
So, like, I, I see they're way behind. Um, uh, in, in, in many families, uh, I see from friends and in the mosques as well, um, I feel that women are uh, not allowed to work or sometimes pursue their studies because, you know, they are um, always seen as they are the responsible figure to take care of um, kids and home. Right. Sometimes it's uh, like uh, even women sometimes depend on their husbands to approve, you know, um, if they want to do any uh, de take decision at, at their home. So I feel that a lot. I don't, I don't have it, alhamdulillah, in my home or in my family. Good. Good. I'm very okay. like, uh, you know, I can yes. uh, decide for myself and um, I did pursue my studies. Uh, I have my master's and uh, I mean, I'm I, taking care I, of my just, kids just, as well. Just, so, just two, uh, two alhamdulillah, questions. Is not in my, and yeah. I, I don't say it's yes. in, in every family or every uh, Muslim, uh, mm. uh, I'll say family or uh, not not all women, but I can see it a lot. Right. Can I can I just sort of just just interject a little bit and and, and pick you up on two questions or two statements, uh, shall I say that, that that you made reference to? I mean, first of all, you said that women, you know, are, 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 are can't work and and are encouraged to stay at home and look after their children and such like. I mean, what's wrong with that? Well, many would argue that's quite a quite a good thing, you know, staying at home and bringing out the children. Um, even when you look at the research. Uh, that is carried out ultimately for the mother to bring up the children is, is extremely beneficial. Well, I'm not saying it's not beneficial. It can be very beneficial for the yes. kids, for the family as well. Yes. But still, if, if um, it depends on, on the woman herself. Like there are women who maybe they are doing better in, in their studies than maybe taking care of kids. I'm not saying um, like they, they shouldn't take care of their kids, but then you see individually what what this person uh, is. But should we encourage? In. I mean, as a community, in your view, should we encourage women to go out to work if they don't necessarily need to, or should we encourage them to stay at home and bring up their children? Well, I, I, I don't see uh, um, you know uh, I don't see that it has to be either way. Like, why not both? Like, we can uh, especially here in the West, um, most of the time uh, they are like in, in at work. Uh, you know, it, you can still have time for family. Right. Now, now another, sometimes, another, uh, another, another question for you, um, and we've got another caller. I just want to also another question. You, you, know, you said you know, women can't take big decisions without sort of permission of their husbands or what consultation or whatever you, you made well, reference I, I to. I feel that uh, many times when when I you know deal with my friends, uh, uh, women friends, um, I notice that you know sometimes you know uh, they are hesitant to say their opinion about something or. Um, if they want to decide something, they'll say, oh, I, I'll check with my husband. Yeah, but it depends first. on what something it is. Like I mean, what's wrong with that? Checking a bit of cons. This is what, see, my point is, I think sometimes we go to sort of extremities. I mean, you know, if my wife wanted to pull out the kitchen and build a new one, I'm hoping that she would say, oh, I'll just check well, with the husband or well, whatever it may be. I'm not talking about, you know, even big stuff, sometimes small stuff. And and not, not just that, like, do you, will you see uh, you as a... Uh, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, as a man that uh, you, you are you going to say to somebody else or, or a friend of you that, oh, I, I'll check with my wife. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I, if my I friend said to me, are time. you free for dinner tomorrow? I would say, and even if I was, I'd say, you know what, I'll check with my wife. What's wrong with that? I don't say, I don't say this is wrong, but if it happens a lot, that woman mentioned yeah, that's, that. That's, that's I feel actually, that it's not. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, thank you very much indeed for your call. Um, Afroz, we will get back to you in a moment and get your feedback on what's been discussed. Uh, we'll patch the other calls. I'm making you know, some notes just to get your perspective on, on this issue of sure. you know, women going to work, this whole thing about consultation with the husband um, and, 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 and such like. Because I think this is an important issue. And I think often we possibly just stereotype. You know, and, and, and but we'll get your view in a moment. Let's just take the caller first. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Thank you for calling in. What's your view on this? Do you Muslim community discriminate against women? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Um, if you yeah. what, is your my, TV on? My question is about that. You know why we have uh, female mulyanis, but we do not have female mushtaid. I don't know whether you will be able to answer this. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, indeed for, for that question. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, no, just if you can explain it better, actually. It's really useful information, actually, for me. Sure. Okay, fine. Thank you very much indeed um, for your call there. Um, so we'll deal with that question in a moment. But first, uh, what the caller said. Uh, let's start off with um, the whole thing about women working. 
Yeah, I think that obviously we shouldn't stereotype, but at the same time we can't neglect the fact that these are challenges that many Muslim women are going through. Um, and, uh, or, you know, many women generally are going through. For me, it makes it worse if it's a Muslim woman because, um, it, because there's, there's no real Islamic justification um, for forcing a woman not to work or not to study if that's what she wishes to do. And when we, when we, when we talk about the um, basic equality of men and women in Islam, um, the directive to, for instance, gain knowledge, even if you have to go to China for it, that applies in equal measure to men and to women. Um, and so that means, and every, every man and every woman in Islam has the right to develop their potential, to pursue what they wish to pursue. Um, and uh, if there are women out there who are mothers, but who would also like to pursue you know, education or work or so on, um, I think that the community should be more supportive of them. It's not, that's mm. not to say that if women are choosing to stay at home and look after them, that we should you know, say that they're wrong to do so. Of course not. But the issue is to give the choice to women and to give women the autonomy to make that decision for themselves rather than having the men in their family decide for them. Yes. Um, as a community, let me paint a scenario for you. Um, a woman can either stay at home and look after the children or go to work and leave the kids with a childminder, assuming that she doesn't need to necessarily work. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's financial stability for the sake of argument. What would you encourage? Um, I think it's what I encourage is pretty much irrelevant. What I would encourage is for every, for each woman, to make the decision that suits her and suits her think, personality. What do we should encourage? I think that as a community, we should be encouraging, we should be non-judgmental towards our women and the choices that they make, and we should encourage them to choose. So you would encourage not nothing, basically? I would, I mean, I would encourage an them to make their own decision and to choose what they feel is right for yeah, them. Sure really, we should provide some sort of guidance, because you can't, you can't sort of um, hope that every single individual will make the right decision. Surely well, what is the right decision? Well, What's know. the right I mean, decision for one woman is not the right decision for another okay, woman. So That's my whole the, argument. The, the point here is, is, is you've got to look at what is best for children. And when it comes to children, that there, is, there is no research that will deny this, that having um, and the mother more than the father, by the way, will having the mother bring out the children will ultimately bring up better kids. Um, and, 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 and this is not something which, it, which is denied. This is not something which is disputed. But what you're saying is that we shouldn't encourage either way. We should leave it to the woman to make her own decision. And many times people cannot make a decision. They, they need guidance. And, but what you're saying is if someone came to a community leader for guidance and said, what do I do in this scenario? You would say, well, do what you think is best. No, and that's just sitting no on the I'm, what I'm talking about is generic advice. If somebody came to me for guidance, I would ask them, I would have a conversation with them about what their preferences are, what they, they see know. themselves they doing. The no, I don't think anybody would right, not so I, know if I, if I, if what I, their preference is. I think anyone would want to, you know, would have some vision of what they want to be doing with their life. Um, certainly by the time that you've, hopefully, by the time that you, you're married and you've got kids, you have some vision of, I don't think that anybody would come to a leader with that question if they didn't have that Fine. conflict. So if, 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 if someone said, you know, so, 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 well, we've got a caller, so we'll carry on. I think there's a very important point here that needs to be uh, looked into further. Before we get to that, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum, my brother and sister. Thank you for calling in. What would you like to say? Okay, now, very politely, I would, uh, first of all, uh, I disagree with this title. Do Muslim communities discriminate against women? I think this should be, do some cultures discriminate against women? Because Islam doesn't uh, teach uh, discrimination, number one. And number two, Islam doesn't allow any discrimination. Right. I will that, give that. one example right. of Lady Fatima al-Zahra, Islamullah and Imam Ali al-Islam. One day Imam Ali al-Islam would work the other day, Lady Fatima Zahra Alaiha would work, and the third day, Bibi Fiza Alaiha, she would work. And uh, this relationship of Imam Ali Islam and Lady Fatima Zahra Alaiha tells everything about uh, the equality of uh, this uh, relationship. And I would also like to comment on uh, one of uh, the sisters who called uh, earlier who said uh, almost the same thing, that uh, women 
are not allowed uh, to make decisions. So if, uh, a vo if a man or a woman, if they do not uh, consult with each other, how it's going to work, I think it's a positive thing to consult. But uh, again, if uh, some people do not allow decision making to their women, that is a cultural thing, not it has nothing to do with Islam. Sure. Thank you very much indeed for your call, which is precisely why we title this show Do Muslim Communities Discriminate Against Women? As opposed to Do Islamic Communities Discriminate Against um, uh, Women? Because Muslims, unfortunately, in some cultures and communities do, while Islam does not. So that's the, 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 the sort of the differentiation there. Um, the, the point I'm trying to get to, um, Afroz uh, Zadizat Javraj, is, is, is the fact that there, there may well um, be a scenario where ultimately the community needs to guide individuals. There has to be some sort of status quo. We can't just sort of view it as a free fall and expect people to be able to make decisions um, necessarily for themselves. From what you're saying, um, if there was a scenario where someone says, look, I don't need to work. I don't need to work. I am financially stable. I'm not sure. I've got a job. I can either stay at home and bring out my children or leave them with a babysitter or in nursery. What you're saying is that the preference would not be, well, stay at home with your kids and give them a good upbringing. You're saying, well, you would just leave it all, all open. I mean, that just is absolutely absurd to me. Well, I'd, I think that you're framing it in sort of really black and white terms when in real lives, in real people's In that scenario, lives, in that, that black and white scenario, what would you... I, I, don't, I don't see it as black and white because I think that it's rarely ever the case that a woman, if she doesn't have to work, um, uh, you know, for financial, whatever, uh, for, for her finances, um, and she has the choice of staying at home, um, I don't think that a woman would then choose to work. I think the if conflict did, comes in. I think the conflict comes in when people, when women want to work beyond the financial gain, okay, when they was. are gaining some kind of, you know, personal development, some kind of personal fulfillment, from going out to work. It's, you know, it's, this is a really kind of alien concept for our communities, but actually women um, can feel a sense of, you know, lack of fulfillment yeah. when, they're when they're at home it's, being just mothers and wives. But isn't that the problem? Isn't that, aren't you actually encouraging a completely negative attitude? Because many would argue no. if you really want to be an effective manager, a CEO, one of the best ways to do it is to manage a household, to bring up children, because that is a very difficult task to do. Many would argue that what no, you're doing is you're, you're belittling that, and what you're arguing I'm is that you can it. go I'm, out for your personal development and, 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 and I'm emphasizing, a do a I'm emphasizing yeah. that women have a choice and their choice should be respected. We, we know they have a choice. My question to you is, what as a community should we encourage? Now, when we I painted a very simple- We should encourage women to develop themselves, not just as wives and as mothers, but as individuals. I, I, I don't deny that, but I'm- But, but I'm, as individuals. So do you see what I, I don't, I don't know if you will understand this point as a man, but I am a mother, I am a wife, and I also work and I also study, and I know that when I was not working and not studying, I did feel that I wasn't doing enough with myself. Um, and I just think that this doesn't make me any worse of a mother than, no, no than that, somebody, but, 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 than but somebody who is, would choose to stay at home at with moment, their child. The, the difficulty is that, 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 that the way that you're phrasing it is that we cannot give any sort of guidance to individuals. And, and I think that's no, what no, I find the quite alarming that and we should give, The guidance that we should give is not take this path or take that path. The guidance that we should give is for women to develop themselves as individuals and to prioritize themselves as individuals alongside thinking of their responsibilities as mothers. All right, let's take another call. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Thank you for calling in. What would you like to say? Well, um, I'm, I'm, I, I've been listening to, to both, both of you quite, um, quite intently. And um, it, it's... Um, I'm a little taken aback by the entire argument and the entire scenario that's in place for the viewers. Um, if I give a little bit of my own example, I, I suppose I could shed a little bit of light here. 
having been an independent Muslim woman who's always made her own choices and made her own decisions throughout her life, be it for work, career, marriage, um, traveling, etc., I've now come to a point where I'm a mother and I made a choice to stay at home so that I could look at the upbringing of my daughter in the best way possible because I felt working, I wasn't, I wasn't giving her the attention that she required. But yet again, living in a Shia community, living in a Muslim community in Birmingham um, on my own, where um, there is very little support um, given to um, single mothers who are working or single mothers who are raising yeah. a family on their own, um, I felt it necessary to take the bull by the horns and make the decision myself. With regards to the actual discrimination, I see what Afroz is saying in that, um, yes, when it comes to major decisions in um, with regards to the greater mosque infrastructure, etc., women can be sidelined. And I've, I've noticed this myself um, going to the local mosque where women do not uh, do, do, do not have a voice within the actual major executive decision-making process. But yet, I feel, having seen the women around me within the community, I feel a lot of them have been allowed to make that choice, and they're not discriminated against per se within their own communities or their own family. Um, however, as greater society, that discrepancy may be there, but I think we need to move a little bit forward from that and look at the greater choices available and um, encourage greater choice-making, decision-making within women themselves. All right. I mean, we've got several callers. I want to come in, but I, I, let me ask you a question. I'm not, same question to you, and I'll put, put it to every single caller, actually, that I put to Afroz, um, is, is that if there was a scenario where a woman um, could work, there's no financial issues here, she could either work or she could stay at home and look after her children. In your view, what should we as a community encourage? Or is it just sort of a, a free-for-all? I, I would leave that choice to the person. I mean, look at the prime examples that we have in, um, in, in our history and in our, our faith of Fatima Zahra, of um, Lady Zainab, of Umm Kulthum, of even Khadija, um, Salam Allah Alayhi, who, who was a very efficient businesswoman and a most proficient homemaker as well. I don't think she was ever ever forced to make the choice between the two. I think the decision was completely left to them. I'm not and saying that this is the, this is the whole problem. We're not talking about forcing. Route. We're not talking about forcing. What I'm saying is, as a community, is, is there? A, I mean, do you think any sort of guidance should be provided, or should we just leave it as a free for all? Well, I'm not talking about I, forcing. I think the guidance. We already have the guidance. But I think we need to we need to look back at the guidance that we have and turn around and no, say, no, no, because you, you can't. What the examples are. No, no, but why, I, I, don't we make our, why don't we make our choices based on this and use this as the prime inspiration? Right. All right, I can hear the, the children in the background there. But thank you very much uh, indeed for your call. So if a caller agrees with you, of course, gosh, well, there we have it. Um, let's take a, another call. Salaamu Alaikum. Hello? Yes. Salaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam. Thank you for calling in. What would you like to say? Uh, I'd like to uh, say three things, first of all. First of all, we said that uh, women should, uh, you said that women should not, um, sorry. You said, of course, you asked about women being represented on uh, television in Ahlul Bayt TV. And I'd like to say that in Islam, we say that women should not really come out where their hijab should come on probe. Especially after, especially as a fatwa, it said that a woman should not come in public and speak out because you know she has to maintain her hijab. And secondly, the so, irony is that on, so why women you... in the yes, go on. The women in uh, women in uh, the West are uh, in the communities are not having a lot of higher positions. Yet in Africa, here in Nairobi, Kenya, we have women with such high positions. We have a women's committee, a women's emancipation committee. And also that they have someone who has a connection with the chairman, and we have a say during their meetings when someone is selected. Right. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so I, I don't quite get your point. What's your point? I'm trying to say that uh, as much as we're arguing about women's rights in community, and I think right now that we ha women have a higher position uh, in communities, and we shouldn't. And first of all, if Bibi Fatima, 
uh, Islam, didn't argue about her position in society or complained about, you know, Ima, you know, why she doesn't have a say in everything, then who are we actually here arguing about a position in communities? Right. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. That, well, st stay on the line. Go ahead. Um, I just think, you know, with the example of um, people just come out and say, um, I heard um, Sister Amina Enloz at an event uh, last year where she said she's very careful with her students of um, them saying things like Islam says, because, you know, who in Islam says it's either the prophet says or it's, you know, the scholar says or the hadith says or the Quran says, but it's not, there's no one entity as Islam. So we cannot make statements such as in Islam, Islam says, Da da da, because we are not verifying it or we are not actually justifying it in any way. Um, and that's not really a valid basis for an argument. Um, in terms of the, the rules of mahram and non mahram, um, looking at the examples of Bibi Fatima alayha, and Bibi Zainab, um, we have seen them actually come out and speak to. Um, uh, to, to male audiences as well. They were behind and they maintained their hijab fully, um, but they did address audiences when, when the need came about. And obviously we need to think about, so my example there is to demonstrate that this rule that women must not address non-mahrams and must maintain their hijab, this is not a black and white rule. Um, mm. And there are, uh, obviously we have adapted many things in the progression of Islam, we have adapted many things as we have, you know, built communities in the West, and this has to be this has to be one of them. There is a precedent for it among our Masumi. Sure. Well, uh, so, so, so I, I didn't quite get what you were trying to point out. I mean, do you think there should be female presenters on Ahlul Bayt TV, or they shouldn't? I think there should be. You still with us? Oh, just as you were about to say, you know. It was... Got cut off at most in. You still with us? Yeah, I'm still there. Yes. Should there be female presenters on Ahlul Bayt TV? Uh, they should be limited, because um, you see, it's not really. Well, what, sorry, 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 sorry. Hold on, a second. hold on, hold on. What, what do you mean by limited? What, duck under the table or something? I mean, what, what, what's limited? What is limited? Should like there be female presenters? Or shouldn't there be female presenters? No, there should be, but not like a lot, like you know. It's, it's a question of hijab. You know, oh, man, okay, hold on. Right, right. They, just, I just want to be absolutely clear about this. So, if there's one female presenter, that's okay. But if there's five, yeah. it becomes a problem for hijab. I mean, what you're saying just doesn't make sense. I'm not saying that if there are five, it's a problem. I'm saying if, like, there's, like, um, you know, just one there, and it's just a show of her alone. It gets people attracted to her. Right. So if there's two, it, so if there's if there's if I'm sitting here and another presenter is sitting there, you think that will somehow make cause some sort of attraction? What what's the issue? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm just no. I think the issue is just women being there because it's question of hijab. We want to argue about hijab. Her voice may be an attraction. So why are you calling in then? Thank you very much indeed for your call. I, that's why I just had to cut you off there because your voice may be an attraction. My goodness. I mean, thank you very much for your call. Uh, I believe we have another caller. So uh, we will patch you in very shortly um, indeed. Do we have another caller? We got, we got 30 seconds, I've been told, to get another caller. What's your view on that? Um, Do you think it's problematic I you being think, on the show? Well, You're you feeling know, intimidated, I, I, discriminated I don't, against? I don't doubt that maybe some, you know, from some religious viewpoints, it may be problematic for women to address mixed audiences or whatever. I'm not sure. But, I mean, I think that if we go back to what the sister was saying about even um, that Bibi Fatima didn't um, complain about her position in society, well, she didn't complain because she was married to Imam Ali alayhi salam, who never denied her any rights. And she was, when she Wait. was upset with what happened, she did complain. She delivered a sermon in front of a male, you know, not in front yeah, of, but, but she, lived, argue... she delivered a sermon to a gathering of men. And I because think, she wasn't happy with it. So we can't just say, oh, we should sit back and accept any injustices that come our right. way. Well, well, well let's, um, let's take a, another call. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, I really like that Aliyah Jafar can, uh, conducts this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, salam to the lady who is with him. I'm sorry, I didn't see, uh, see the name. Salam. But I will put Afroz Zaidi Jivraj. 
you know, I want to tell you something, uh, Rizza. Please do us a favor. Yes. It's that the lady of light, Sayyidatul Nisail Alami. Yes. And her daughter. Yes. I think we should stop telling ourselves and making ourselves fools that we are emulating them as our role models. I think we should just stop it. Because right. the way we, we, we uh, use them as drop of the hat uh, word of role models and even ha harm them, but even harm our other image for the future generation. Their piety, they did things for Allah and purely for Allah. They went hungry for so many, many, many days, which I think none of us have got that, even though we fast. Okay? Right. So let's get that one thing clear that stop comparing these ladies of light, even janab Khadija, that she spoke in the court, and uh, janab Sira spoke in the court for Fadak. Well, the, the, speech, the speeches that they gave were for Allah, one, and they gave it at a crucial time when they realized that Islam is in danger. Okay. Bibi Sayyidah did not fight for that piece of land which we call Fadak. Sure. Or even if it was half the earth, she wouldn't have turned on and said, give it to me, because she knew what was next on the cards of the gentleman who did it. Sure. All right. Okay? Stay, stay on the line. Stay on the line. Let me just make a frozen. It's an interesting point that is raised there. Many would argue, you know, we, we, we do use arguments of um, <laughs> Sayyidah Zahra, salam ala alayha, um, Sayyidah Khidija, salam ala alayha, and many others, where we sort of, um, we... we we use them as a reference point to justify certain arguments, but many would argue that the actions wherein they're engaged were in a particular context, at a particular time, for a particular purpose. And these examples should not be used as blanket justifications for, for um, certain issues. There is a valid point to be made there. Um, sure. No, I, you know, I, I can agree with that. And as much as, you know, we have to understand the context in which it happened, at the same time, I don't agree with uh, the idea that we shouldn't refer to them as role models or that we can't emulate them or that we can't say we are trying to emulate them because, you know, at the end of the day, no individual can judge anybody else's intentions. Um, I think it's a bit disingenuous to say um, that Bibi Fatima, salamu alayha, delivered the f uh, sermon of Fadak because she did it for the pleasure of Allah and because she was trying to serve God and the deen of Islam. And then to say that women who lecture in this day and age or who may address a mixed audience are not doing it for the pleasure of Allah. All right, stay on the line. Let's, that is a complete uh, misrepresentation. Sure. Let's uh, take, uh, are you still on the line? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a fairly valid point, isn't it? I mean, we all ultimately, everything that we do, um, many would argue, is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the ultimate sort of level of... Um, be, let's let be very clear that they perfection. did not, uh, she stood behind, uh, even in that court where, where, do you want me to take his name? The second caliph? Oh yes, yes, of and course, yeah. Yeah, She stood behind uh, a parda. Yeah. She did not, she did not come in front of the gents. Yeah, that's, uh, there's nothing, nobody's arguing okay. that. Yeah. Okay, okay, so if, if, if st 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 so line. let's be very, very, very perfect about her hijab. Yeah, nobody's argued that. I, I didn't no, no, say nobody's that she argued, was behind. But here, we are, we are, here, here at the drop of a hat, we are not ready to take a small little uh, thing from our husband. Okay, so do you, do you think we okay? should put a curtain I don't know incident. Someone prays on the pulpit. I don't know who this lady was. Mm. But when her husband comes home, he finds his shirts cut up and kept in a black bin bag in the garden. Yeah, well, we can't, we can't that much remember. endurance someone has. Right. I mean, I can't, can't obviously, so uh, we can all cite personal the, issues. They're, they're I mean. telling us on the pulpit, our own ulama are saying they are role models. I mm. hate to hear this. Because I yeah. think, let's, let's first follow their little rule of staying hungry or, uh, you know, bringing up the children. Because for the, bringing up children is a very big right. task. Let me ask you a question. Let, let me ask you a question. And, and, and I want your answer, and then we'll, we'll move on. Should there be a curtain here? Should we have a little box? And, and a little curtain. No, no, now see, Aliza, now I, I'm telling you where, uh, this thing that you cannot do this uh, in, 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 in the studio that you're doing it. I, because well, we can, we can. We've got Hussain, the technology. We can, I don't know, we may Hussain, be able to do it now. I can ask someone to... I remember to... Hasnain Rajabali's uh, one lecture which was aired by Ahlulbayt TV. And he said there was an American look, lad here you are. who came look, to our See camp. this? I'm doing it now. And we could, we could ask our frauds to hold the Sorry. paper like this and then no one will see her. And she can, she can, we can have the show like this. But the other way around. No, I'm not asking oh, you to do that. Just do, let's just do a demonstration. Just to, sorry, just to make a point, 
Right, just come, come in your face. No, no, that way, in front of your face. Right, can we, can we, should, should, we, should, we, should we present the show in your view like that? No, I'm not saying there that. You go. So what's the problem? I'm saying that don't get that lady who's epitome of purity into our uh, this thing's life saying that she's our role model. Because the truth is, Ali Raza, she is not. But she, she is the role model, is she not? I mean, I don't see your point. Surely no, no, they she are is role not. Models. Because let's face it, if she was really and truly our role model, then the houses that are breaking today, women are sending their husbands to jail. Mm, okay, so but we should strive yes. to make her our role model, right? We should, we should emulate, but at least not... Uh, I think that's an abuse to her, sorry. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for your call. Some very passionate um, um, views there. What's your feedback? I just think, you know, I, I don't understand. I mean, I've heard this view before that, well, they were perfect. The Masumin Aleh Salaam were perfect. And uh, we cannot possibly um, uh, emulate them. Um, but, I mean, you could, you could use that argument for anything. You could say that the Prophet Aleh Salaam was uh, perfect. And so we shouldn't no, be following I, any I sunnah the point, of the Prophet. I think the, point here is, I think the point here is not that. I think the point here is, for example, when we discuss the issue of... of um, women going out to work, for example. Yeah. And, and you know, you've know, got a situation where most people would argue, there is an argument that you know, ultimately um, an argument is that we should encourage women to, where, where they can, where they have a choice to stay at home and bring up the children because ultimately that will be better for the overall development of the children and, and find a way to also enhance their own personal development. Now, the problem is that an individual then called in and said, ah, well, when it came to Imam Ali, Imam Ali worked one day, Fatima uh, Zahra uh, worked the other day and Fiza worked the third day, right? And so what we did is we drew, an, we, drew, we drew an immediate inference and a reference there to substantiate our own point. Yeah. But, but that was completely out of context. And um, what it basically says is, well, one could argue women should all be encouraged to go out to work and all the kids should be encouraged no, to go into I think that, uh, well, the nurseries. And, and that is the risk, that we, that we twist certain facts of history in order to that... substantiate our own belief or understanding. I think the example that the brother gave earlier was not to do with um, going out to work. I think he was specifically referring to working in the home. I think he was referring to domestic chores um, uh, because that is actually the case. I don't think that he was referring to um, them going out of the home to work. What is um, wrong with a man working from 9 till 5 or 9 till 6 and then coming home and not wanting to do domestic chores? Again, people would not, this is what I'm getting at. You see, people tend to argue, oh, well, it all has to be 50 50. And no, all this, I think that's, we're, we're going say. to a different subject there, but I think in terms well, you, of, in why terms is it a of different the, subject? because, it was we, about because we were talking about, we were talking about using that example. Yeah. Um, okay. so and, on, you know, using that example yeah. in the context of women working, um, I don't think that you can, you, I don't think it's, it's a proper comparison, actually, because what the brother was referring to was uh, Khadija working Khadija Let me ask you another example. Khadija Alayhi uh, Salaam is, is another example, yeah, where, people, an example of, yeah, where people will use that example. So they will yeah. say, if I were to ask that question about, um, you know, should a woman um, stay at home and look after children or go out to work if she has a choice and is financially stable and all the rest of it? People say, ah, oh, well, you know, um, Khadija went out, uh, may peace be upon her, and therefore um, we can do the same. Many would argue that is just taking things out of context. Um, I think it depends on how you do it. I think that you need to, at the end of the day, these people, all of the Masumin alayhi salam, all of the Ahl al-Bayt, they are role models for us. We do aspire to be like them and we do see in them a model of living and we try to apply it in our lives. We, how else can we be Muslims? We can't just, you know, the word of, of the Quran and the Hadith is, you know, will we'll go so far but at the same time we need to look at their examples. Yeah, but isn't on the case, sometimes we, we, we manipulate. The argument is that we manipulate certain examples to suit our own purposes and to um, facilitate I our think, arguments. I think, again, I don't think that we can, you know, doubt. We, I don't think we can judge the intentions of anybody to say that people manipulate. I don't think we can, you know, judge. Um, you don't we think know. people manipulate certain historical facts to prove their own point? No, no, that's a, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. But I think when people, specifically when they are using the examples of the Ahlul Bayt to um, apply them to our lives and to see how we can live in an Islamic way, I don't think 
that in all instances, or even in, I wouldn't be in a position to say whether even in some instances people are using that to manipulate the argument. Right. And because that for me is doubting their intention, which I don't have the ability to do. Of course, Lady Jarash, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's been, been a pleasure. Thank you also to those that thank participated you. through the phones. As ever, you can email your feedback, tbq at ahlulbait.tv. Thank you again to our esteemed guest uh, and also to those that participated via uh, the tweets, Facebook and email. Sorry we couldn't get to those. We shall be back at the same time next week. Have a wonderful evening. Assalamu alaikum. Oh.